Good morning. Welcome to River Valley Christian Fellowship. I'm excited to worship with you today. My name is Rhonda Stenzinger, and I just want to let you know if you are new on your bulletin, there's a QR code that you can scan that, and it'll take you to our website, social media platforms, um, our ministries, anything you would want to know about our church. If you would like to give with tithes and offerings, you can also go to the QR code, and there's online giving, or there are boxes at the back for your giving. There's a lot going on, so let's get going. There's a baptism class today at 4 o'clock in room S3, so if you are interested in being baptized, please come to that. The actual baptistry will be on November 20th. Next week is our 60th anniversary. We are celebrating that. We are going through the decades of music. We're going to party like it's 1999. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to do all kinds of music. And the 930 and the 11 will be identical services. However, there is a dessert reception following the 11 in the back. There will be testimonies during that time. And just the whole day will be a celebration of God's faithfulness through the years. Um, next week, the Cafe Connect Cafe is moving to the South Venue. It will be there from now on. There'll be new things on the menu, but next week it's free coffee. And lastly, um, something near and dear to my heart is Live 117. It's a ministry our church has um, for foster mothers, foster adoptive mothers, and safe family moms. We meet once a month. We encourage each other on and share different information, but we also do ministry outside these walls. And one of the things we do is get a Christmas gift for every foster child in Kankakee County. Right now we have 144 children that we need to buy for, and we need you to help us with that. Um, these kids have been neglected, abandoned, and we want to give them a note in there telling them about the true father that will never abandon them. So let's give them some love this Christmas. The foyer, you go out there, get a tag with the name on it. They already have their wish list on there. And then all the information is there. And we have a little party for them in December. And they will come and get their gift. So please do that. Thank you for coming today. And let's worship with Logan and the team. Thanks, Rhonda. Is that for me or you? I don't know. We're going to say it's for you. <laughs> Well, good morning, River Valley. It is such a privilege to be here with you today. Would you stand with us? Psalm 46 says this, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. This is the word of the Lord this morning. Aren't you grateful for that promise? Let's sing together. To be satisfied with vain and empty Until the moment you rescued me And your love filled me My soul sings Now my soul sings What blessed assurance
praise. You restore the wasted years. You build the broken walls. Your love replaces fear And your mercy makes us whole Adopted, healed, and lifted so I am not the same I'm a new creation I am not the same For your cross This broken life made new And I'm amazed at all you are And who I am in you Adopted, healed, and lifted You may be seated. It is great to see all of you here uh, today. I know it's Olivet's homecoming, so all of you parents with uh, students today, we welcome uh, you here today. Uh, big games on campus uh, throughout the weekend. Congratulations to men's basketball, football, next time, all right? And uh, we're, we're so grateful uh, that you're here, and we're grateful for parents who uh, believe that it is important uh, to come before the Lord and their church family to make promises uh, to God and their church family about their children and how they will raise their children in the Lord. And so we're going to invite those who are dedicating themselves and their children today to come stand here with me on the platform, if you would. Just come right on up. Right on up. How you guys come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spread out a little bit. Yeah, you're going to have to go that direction. You were right the first time. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Welcome all, everybody. It's great to see you. Isn't this wonderful? Yeah. Uh, 
I am so thankful for each of you. Uh, I'm going to stand over here in the shadow a little bit so everyone can see you. Uh, we are um, grateful uh, for you and for this moment in the life, your own life, and the life of your, your child and your children. So let me read to you. The family, of course, is a divine institution uh, created and ordained by God from the beginning of time. So this dedication does not today impart faith uh, to the child or forgiveness of sins to the child. Rather, it is the parent's acknowledgement that their children are a gift uh, to them and that they have a spiritual responsibility for the child's nurture and training. Now, we remember that in the Gospels, we read that people brought their little children to Jesus, and he laid hands on them and prayed over them. In the same way, you bring your child in recognition that your child and you are in need of Jesus. I want to call your attention to what Moses wrote in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 7, which really defines what this means today. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments are to be upon your hearts and press them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. The responsibility we know is great and we need, desperately need God's help in, in the nurture and training of our children. Let me ask you these questions. By coming before, before God and His church, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and your child to the Lord? If so, please respond by saying, we do. Do you pledge as parents that with God's help, you will bring up your children in the instruction of the Lord, making every effort with patience and love to teach them the Word of God and model love for His church? If so, answer, we do. Do you promise to provide through God's blessing for the physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual needs of your children, looking to your heavenly Father for wisdom, love, and strength to serve them? If so, answer, we do. Do you promise to invest in your marriage and faithfully live out the vows you made to one another? If so, answer, we do. Do you promise God helping you to make your, it your regular prayer that by God's grace, your child, children, will come to trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins, for the fulfillment of all of his promises to them? If so, answer, we do. Now, I'm going to pray this prayer. I'm going to invite you all to uh, pray uh, with me as well. And, uh, but I'm going to take a little liberty here, all right, uh, because... This is my granddaughter, Lucy, and, and it's a privilege to be able to dedicate her. So, would you hold that for a second? Come here, Luce. <laughs> so, I would like to pray this prayer by holding her for all of you uh, today, and would you pray with me? Gracious God and giver of life, I pray for these parents that you would give them wisdom and patience as they teach their children and model what it means to love and follow you. I pray that peace and joy and laughter will fill their homes. So, Lord, would you please strengthen them in faith, sustain them by your love, and order their lives in prayer. And so now, today, we dedicate these children to you. We dedicate Lucy. We dedicate Caleb and Samuel. We dedicate Sophie and Emily and Mason to your care and your keeping. We pray for these children that you be gracious to them. We pray that they will respond to the gospel while they are young and carry out the Christian heritage that they are inheriting. Please, Father, bless these parents as they carry out this commitment day by day, hour by hour, as they've made before you today and your church. Amen. Now, um, I do have a gift for all of you. Oh, yeah, you're already showing the pictures, but let me, uh, Lucy, I'm sh let me get you covered up here. <laughs> so immodest. All right, so, uh, so there's Lucy Elizabeth right there, and 
And next we have Sophie Ray. Where's Sophie? Zane and Christina, congratulations. And Caleb. Oh, there's Caleb. There's your picture on the big screen, buddy. And next we have Samuel. Samuel Michael. Yeah. And next we have Emily. You see your picture up there, Emily? Yeah. And Brother Mason. All right. It is, it is such a privilege uh, to have them. I'm going to give you uh, all a gift uh, for, for, from the church and from, from me. Uh, this is a Bible, and also this is a, um, a letter from me. that I've been doing this for a few years, and this is uh, a letter that is to be open on their 12th birthday. All right? And, uh, and so if you have the letter by then, or if you've thrown it away along the way. Uh, but uh, it is for, for you and for, uh, for them. And this is for the Sollers. Congratulations, you guys. And Sophie. Congratulations, all of you. Would you thank these families today? You may be seated.
Who else can rescue me from my failing? Who else would offer his only son? Who else invites me to call him father? This is what we've come to do, to worship our holy God uh, today. Uh, for those of you, I, I don't even think I introduced those parents that were standing here. So I want to say uh, Logan and Tiffany, uh, parents of Lucy and Jordan and Kristen Soller, uh, parents of Caleb and Samuel, Zane and Christina DeBeck, uh, uh, parents of Sophie and Nate and Nicole Gass, uh, uh, parents of Emily and Mason, we congratulate all of you today and all of you that are with them. Can you just give me a wave if you're with these families today in support of them? Are you, no one's owning them. Okay, a few of you are. All right, excellent. Well, we're glad that you've joined uh, today. Um, you know, we've been in a series over the last uh, several weeks, and uh, we call this uh, series One Big Family. One big family, and we've been discovering and thinking about God's plan from the very beginning to form a family uh, for himself. You may remember that in the, the Garden of Eden, God created for him a, a first family, Adam and Eve. And yet, it wasn't long, we believe, that they rebelled against God, and we know the consequences of that first family and sin enter, entering into the world. We see in Genesis 6, uh, humanity continuing to be corrupted, uh, both uh, rebellion we see in the spirit realm and in the earthly realm in Genesis chapter 6. And so God sends a global flood uh, to fill the earth and starts over again. And yet, by the time we get to chapter 11 and the Tower of Babel, we see that this family is rebelling against God once, once again. And we see that God had assigned members, uh, divine beings of his divine council to oversee these nations we see uh, sent out from the Tower of Babel, God confusing their languages about 70 of these nations are, are formed, and yet these that were supposed to superintend and guide these nations to God rebelled against God as well. But God in chapter 12 of Genesis chooses a man from Mesopotamia, one family. We know him as Abraham. And there God gives Abraham a promise. Here's what he says. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and in him, and him who dishonors you, I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. All the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, throughout the Old Testament, as you read uh, Israel's history, we know that God did, in fact, form a people for himself. We know them as Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. We, we also see throughout, uh, throughout the, the narrative, we see that God gives them a land, a promised land of their own. But that third part of the promise given to Abraham is a little confusing. All the families of the earth, he says, will be blessed through you. 
By the time we get to the old, at the end of the Old Testament, we see, at the end of the Old Testament, we see God's family back in Jerusalem. They have, they've formed a nation. There are about 50,000 of them in Jerusalem. They've rebuilt a shadow of what the temple once was. So there's a people, and they're in the land, but what about this blessing to all families of the earth? When you end the Old Testament, they are anything but a blessing to all the families of the earth. So when we close our Old Testaments, there are 400 years between the Old and the new, what we call the New Testaments. And then when we open up the New Testament, we find this. There were shepherds keeping their watch over their flocks at night. And an angel came to them and said, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For today, in the city of David, the Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Jesus said of his own crucifixion, he said this. He says, And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself, all families of the earth. Through Jesus' life and his death and his resurrection on the third day and his ascension to heaven, Jesus, through Jesus, we have a a way. He has made a way for us through faith, by his grace, to come into and be adopted into his global family. That we find that Jesus, in Jesus, the fulfillment of the promise given to Abraham 2,000 years before was fulfilled in his life, death, resurrection, and ascension. That through Jesus, God is getting his global family back. It is a reversal of what happened at the Tower of Babel. When the nations were scattered, now God, through Jesus, is bringing them into his family through adoption. Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise given to Abraham. This is what Paul writes in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say and to his offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one. And to your offspring, who is Christ. Verse 28, Paul writes, There is neither now Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male or female, for you all are one in Christ Jesus. And if you are in our Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Through Jesus, we are one with our global family from all languages, nations, tribes, and peoples. Paul writes about this new family that God was forming from Jews and Gentiles in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13 when he writes there, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Verse 19, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household. And Paul, in chapter 3 of Ephesians, you may remember as we talked about this, he calls all of this a mystery, how God was bringing Jews and Gentiles, all nations, ethnicities, languages, and peoples together into one family. He calls it a mystery, even though this was God's plan from the very beginning. Here's what Paul writes in chapter 3, verse 4. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. How many of you come from a, how many of you are an only child in your family? All right. Only children? Yeah. Yeah, we know about you. Okay, and how many of you come from small families? Just a, just a few of you, one or two siblings, yeah, yeah. And how many of you come from big families, like six or more, all right? Yes, yes, that's right. Yes, we, everybody, it's survival of the fittest in those families. So whether you come, if you're an only child in your family or whether you come from a big, big family, let me just tell you, all of us, 
All of us cannot even comprehend the family that we have in Christ that is a global family that God continues to bring together. You and I have brothers and sisters in Christ all across this planet who name the name of Jesus. God is making for himself a family. Those in every nation who will trust in him as Savior and Lord. Those who form this family now carry this good news we call the gospel to those who have not yet heard and believed. Paul is writing, remember, we've been studying Ephesians. We've been walking through Ephesians chapter by chapter. We'll continue to do that. But today, I want us to summarize and to this culmination of this series, one big family to know that Paul, when he's writing to Ephesus, he's writing to a, a family, a family predominantly of Gentiles that had been brought in through the gospel, through the proclamation of the gospel, and they are now in the church with people, the Jews, whom they would have not associated with otherwise. Maybe they would have done business with them, but they would have not been in what we call the church. They have been brought in together. And, and Paul, he brought the gospel to Ephesus. He brought it to Asia Minor and the churches that he founded in Asia Minor. And our special guests, we have special guests today. Our special guests are doing the same thing, bringing and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that through the proclamation of the gospel, more and more people will become worshipers of God, more and more people will become disciples of Jesus, more and more people will become part of God's global family. Would you watch this as we introduce our special guest today? Hi, we're Joe and Allie Lemonager, and along with our three kids, Louis, Josie, and Eloisa, we're missionaries working to make disciples and grow Christ Church in Frankfurt, in Germany. In Frankfurt, there are three major issues we are seeing plague the city. First, there are many people who don't know Jesus. Second, there are many people who don't know someone who even knows Jesus. And third, there are some people who may know Jesus, but they may not be sharing their faith over the past two and a half years, Allie and I have lived in a district of Frankfurt called Nordbestadt. And we've spent that time learning and growing, learning the language and the various cultures here in Frankfurt, the needs of the city, and learning how to disciple both believers and unbelievers. It's been amazing to see God at work amid so many challenges. We've seen many people discipled, we've seen lives transformed by the gospel, and we've seen baptisms of new believers, leaders trained up and launched into different parts of the city, and church planters raised up and planting churches in different districts of the city. But yet there's still so much to do. Yeah, many districts of Frankfurt are virtually unreached. Districts like Riedberg, a community of 22,000 people with no living or missional church. And we're excited to be a part of a church planting team that will be reaching this district as we launch in December of this year. We'll be coming alongside a German couple who will be heading up the church plant. We'll be supporting them and encouraging them. Our goals in the next five years are to support the church plant in Riedberg by establishing and growing the team, reaching the local community with the gospel through missional living, making disciples who multiply, and training and sending out future church planters to unreached districts of Frankfurt. As we look back over the past two and a half years we've been in Germany, we are so grateful for the team of partners who have come alongside us and made what we're doing possible. And as we look to the future, we still need to grow our team of financial and prayer partners as we launch into this next season of ministry. If God is leading you to get involved in the work he's doing in Frankfurt, we hope you connect with us and we hope to hear from you. Would you welcome Joe and Allie Lemonager today? It is so good to have you guys here with us. Thank you. Thank you for having, having us. us. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let me just jump in uh, today. You guys are serving with Greater Europe Mission, GEM, and you've been in Germany now for two and a half years. Yeah. You guys got to Germany in January of 2020, yes. just in time for the global pandemic. Yes, yes. 
And, uh, and so you have, since we, so we haven't seen you since you left uh, in January 2020. Uh, and, and you have some new additions to your family, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> we have two little girls, Josie and Eloisa. Our son, Louis, is sitting over there by our pastor, who is joining us all the way from oh. Germany to come say hi to you all yeah. and support us. <laughs> Jason, I didn't see you over there. Welcome, Jason. It's a pleasure. I met, I met him earlier this week in Chicago at a conference yes. and had the opportunity to sit and have lunch uh, with him and meet him. And uh, what a privilege it is to have you uh, with us today. So if you uh, know some German, you can practice with Jason after the service. That's so. right. That's right. <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, for those of you that maybe have not met you yet, uh, why Germany? Why did God, how did, how did that process lead you uh, this calling leads you to Germany. Yeah, so uh, it's great to be here, River Valley. This is home for us. We love you guys, and we're so grateful to be here. Um, just want to start with that. It's awesome to see you guys. Um, why Germany? Yeah, so Ali and I, kind of backing up, we attended um, a school called Moody Bible Institute out in Spokane, Washington, um, and wanted to establish just kind of the foundation for ministry out there. Um, in between our sophomore and junior year, we got married um, uh, about three months into our marriage, we um, found out that I had cancer. I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. And then Allie got pregnant a month later. It's kind of a whirlwind of things. And so we moved back to Illinois, stayed with my folks as I went through treatment. And we had our son. Um, I'm cancer-free five years now. Praise God for Praise that. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Um, but in a real Jonah moment, I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing ministry. I, I have a family to take care of now. Um, and in an experience of going through cancer, you, you feel out of control. Yeah. And I wanted nothing more than to have control in that season of life. And so I dove deep into work. Um, and I got a great job working in the city, um, managing fuel systems for 525 gas stations in Texas. Could have been a great career job. But after like 10 months of that, um, ten months of running, mm-hmm. my soul was just so dry, both Allie's and mine. And we realized, you know, God had given us a real desire um, and a real calling to vocational ministry, and we needed to be obedient to that. And so we began to pray and just said, God, we have no idea um, where or what, um, but yeah, the Lord led us to the right people. Yeah, so uh, we were attending a church, Calvary Memorial, in Oak Park, Illinois, and I was attending this women's Bible study, and one Tuesday morning they had um, a couple come, and the wife was basically sharing to the women that there was a great need in Germany, that Germany was less than, um, can you guys hear me? Now this is better, huh? Um, was less than 2% evangelical. And I had never heard that. I thought, yeah, Germany, the Europe has churches, has beautiful churches. Um, and she had said, it's less than 2%, and maybe on a Sunday you'll have 7 or 8 to 10 people on a Sunday service. And so the, the weight of the spiritual um, just deadness in, in, in Germany really impacted me. And um, I felt like, well, how do I know that I have the qualities or the abilities to even become a missionary or even do those things? So long story short, she just said, come, just come join us. Um, we are a part of a church planting movement there, and, um, and we are doing that in Frankfurt. And I thought to myself, well, actually, I think I know someone in Frankfurt. And then thinking back, um, Joe's freshman year roommate um, was a German, and we were very close with him, and he's actually attended River Valley while he was visiting, and um, visiting Kankakee area, and um, he, after a year of being at Moody altogether, he decided that he was going to move back to, to, to Germany, and we kind of hadn't seen him in a while, but I had heard that he was a part of like a church planting movement in, in Frankfurt somehow, some way, and so I 
mentioned to her, I said, do you know a guy named Marcus Engel? I don't know, it's kind of a long shot. And she was like, yes, I know Marcus. He's a part, also a part of, of what we're doing in Frankfurt. And so the immediate connection there I thought was just really cool. And then I ran home and I was like, Joe, Marcus is working in Frankfurt. We have been wanting to do ministry for this last year and been praying and asking the Lord to lead us where. And our hearts were really for um, refugees and immigrants in the very beginning. Um, but as we sort of went through the process and learned more about what was happening in Frankfurt, um, we ended up having a phone call with Marcus and Jason Lim over there. And um, they just said, we, we planted a church in a community of 17,000 people, mostly um, of non-German background and living missionally in this community. So, And we were like, Yes, that's exactly what we yeah. want to do, too. So Yeah, I heard a great analogy, too. Um, you know, like, let's imagine we're picking up this table, and there's, there's nine people on one end, and there's one person on the other end. Like, what side of that table should we be compelled to move towards? I think it's the, the person that needs help. And I think that's kind of what we saw. There's such a deep need. Um, it's not to say that there isn't need here right. in the States, but there's such a, a great need in Germany. And, and so we were compelled by that need yeah. uh, to go and, and to live missionally and, and to make disciples. And that's what we've been doing for the past two and a half years. And you've been part of this church plant there. That's and right, yeah. Jason's your pastor. He planted the church. He planted, Jason planted Jason the will church. say he's no longer our pastor. <laughs> okay. He's sending he's our, us out. He's our boss now. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's right. So like, we're get gonna, out of here. <laughs> He's had enough. He's Two had and enough. Years <laughs> is enough. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been talking about, um, through this series, about our global family. And I thought, you know, you've told me about some of the makeup in Germany. Of course, we know that it, there's, it's, un, you know, unchurched. Uh, but could you tell me, you know, there's, it's such a melting pot of people from all around the world coming into Frankfurt. But could you also tell me about some of those in your church. You know, we've been talking about who is our global family, and I thought, having you here, could you tell us about a couple of people from your church that we may never get to meet, but they're part of our family? So could you introduce us to a, a member of our family that, uh, from Germany and yeah. tell us about who they are? Yeah, so I want to introduce you to two people. Um, one of them is a believer and the other is not. So the first is the unbeliever. His name is Ahmed. And Ahmed is an Iranian refugee. Um, I met him on a late night walk with another refugee friend of mine. His name is Mimo. He's from Syria. Um, and he approached us and actually asked Mimo for a cigarette because Mimo smokes. And, and, uh, and so Mimo gave him one. And I, I just said, hey, Ahmed, do you want to walk with us? Uh, we're just walking around. And so he walked with us for three hours. Wow. And we talked about everything. We talked about life and politics and faith. And I got to share the gospel with him. And he said, I think Christianity is so beautiful. I want to learn more. Yeah. Um, I'm very interested. And so I said, um, would you like to read the Bible with me? And he said, yeah. And so we, over the past year, we've read the Bible. We've listened to podcasts. We've had so many <laughs> intense conversations just about everything from, um, yeah, just everything in between. Yeah. And, and um, at the end of it, he said, you know, I will never believe in Jesus. Mm. And, you know, that crushes you. Mm -hmm. But then I want to share a story about a guy named Patrick, right? Um, Patrick, he was hanging out at a, at a local soccer field. And um, actually, Jason connected with him and got to talking with him. And Patrick said that he was interested in, in, you know, learning more and wanted to find out about whether or not he should be a Christian Protestant or if he should be a Catholic. He was kind of in a decision-making process. And so Jason discipled him along with our community, and Patrick decided that he wanted to follow Jesus. And I was there uh, as Patrick was baptized, yeah. and, um, yeah, it was an incredible moment. And now Patrick and Ahmed are friends. And they go and they play basketball every weekend. Mm. And Patrick shares about Jesus with Ahmed and shows him, hey, look at the way that Jesus has transformed my life. And talks to him and walks alongside him and brings him into his life. And so we pray that Ahmed will come to Jesus. And That's we pray right. that Patrick will continue to bear witness to what Christ has done. 
Amen. Those are two people, just an example of kind of what's happening in this community and, and um, yeah, how God is at work there. Praise God. Praise God. Um, you know, you've mentioned, you've used a word here a few times that people may be a little unfamiliar with. Uh, and I'd like for you, because you just gave me examples of it, but let me, uh, I, I want you to kind of drill down into this a little bit. What does it mean, you've used the word missional, living missionally. What does that mean? Uh, how would you define missional living? You've uh, just described it a little bit in your context. And, and how would you encourage or teach us what that would look like in our own context? Um, I'll give my input, and then Joe can get, can maybe add to it. Um, so, I think Bradley is about seventeen thousand people, something like something that. like that, yeah. and that's the neighborhood that we were just in. And there is no no church there. I think our community is probably the only church in that um, community that's missional. That is gospel-centered. And so what we mean by mission is that as we are on a journey with the Lord and as we are following Jesus, it means bringing people who don't know him into that. Because with let's imagine ourselves out of this building and we're all sitting here in, in the field somewhere. We're still the church. And so as we are the church and as we live together as the church and as a family— we invite people into that who don't know Jesus and who have never heard of him. Or maybe they have heard of him, but they don't know what it means to follow him. And so it means living missionally means to be intentional about inviting those who are far from God, who are far from, from Jesus, and bringing them closer to him together as River Valley. Together, that's how you you're growing deep together, but you're reaching wide in your neighborhood, and you're asking your neighbors over for, for a coffee, for a meal, and you're sharing life with them. You're wondering, what is their story? What is their life about? And how can I input Jesus into their story? Because someone came to us and told us about Jesus, and now we follow him. And so we need to be doing the same thing in our neighborhoods to our neighbors who don't know him. And so that's kind of our vision, um, is that we live in a very multicultural neighborhood, or we used to, now we moved, but we live in a very multicultural neighborhood. And so when you're talking about God's family, even as Germans, it's like on a Sunday, we have, we have um, someone on our leadership team that is from Hong Kong, we have a Mexican, we have um, American, we have Germans, we're all working alongside each other, and we're reaching the neighborhood together. So it's not just Germans, it's actually a very multicultural um, vision that we have, because that's that's also our neighborhood, is that it's very multicultural, and we want to embody that. We want to embody Jesus. And that's, at the end of the day, that's what heaven's going to be like, right? It's going right. to be all nations. And so um, that's what we want to be, and that's how we want to embody that in our neighborhood. So. That's wonderful. And missional living can be as simple as, hey, Ahmed, would you like to walk with us? Yeah. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. yeah, I would just add, missional living is, like Ali said, it's an intentional way of doing life. Um, and bringing people into our lives. Because the thought is, right, if Jesus is at the center of my life and I bring somebody into my life, they're going to see Jesus and I'm going to talk about him. Yeah. And if I have a community of people, right, if we are living together, we're bearing each other's burdens, we are, we're working out our faith together, the love of Christ is going to be experienced and seen through us. And when we bring an unbeliever into that, they're going to see that because in today's day and age, we can't logic people to Jesus. They need to see That's right. that the, the truth and the power of the gospel has truly transformed our lives. And you see that in community. Yeah. And so missional living is, is an intentional way of doing life that brings people into community so that they see Jesus and they get to know him and they follow after him. And, and something uh, that I recently learned was in 100 AD, there were 25,000 Christians 200 years later, how many Christians do you think there were? So there were 100,000. There, there were 25,000 25, in 100, 100 AD. Yeah. And 200 years later, how many Christians do you, do you guys think there were? Just throw out a number. Let's hear something. Two million. Two million. All right. There were 20 million. 20 million Christians 200 years later. 
Do you think that happened through professional Christians and just a couple of key people? No. No. It happened through lay people who were passionate about Jesus, who understood that there was hope, and that hope was worth talking about and bringing people into. And so that's what we want to do. We want to be people uh, that understand what Jesus has done for us. We want to start with that, and that deep transformation that we've experienced compels us to bring people in and to say, hey, look what Jesus has done for me. Do you want to follow him too? Yeah. Wonderful, guys. Thank you. Um, You're leaving uh, in uh, just a few weeks. You'll be leaving here and going back to Germany, but not the same place. As the video said, you're going to Liedbeck. Did I say that correctly? No. (laughs) (laughs) Liedbeck. 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 R. It's a German R. Oh, okay. Just let's say in English, Riedberg. 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 Exactly. So you're going there. There is no... There's no church? Evangelical. Yeah. There, there is actually a very small group of, of Christians. They're older, um, and they're not very interested in making disciples. But we love them, and we're, we're going we're gonna to hang out with them. Um, but, yeah, we will be really, in essence, the, the only missionally living, the only really yeah, gospel-centered, missionally living church in that community of 22,000 people. Right? So... I mean, shoot, it, that's hard if, to imagine, isn't it? 22,000, no gospel-centered church there. That, that's really, we can't really comprehend that. We take so much for granted. Uh, so you'll be part of a team. A team's being formed. Yeah, that's right. And you're being sent out to this community. Yeah, we've been sent out. So we actually moved into this district um, right before we came to the States in September and Jason and our, and our other pastors and the church there, they said, hey, we've had enough of you guys. Uh, move, go, take what you've learned, and um, plant a church in this district. And what's super cool is that we're actually doing that with that guy Allie mentioned, Marcus, who was my freshman roommate. He's going to be the lead pastor. He'll be the church planter, and we're coming alongside him. So it's just a super cool story of how God has worked over the past eight years and our friendship and just the way that he's worked in us. And... Yeah, um, Allie and I, along with, with Marcus and Maddie, and then another gal who's committed, um, and a couple of other people who are thinking about joining, will plant a, a church, a missional community. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, Joe and Allie, it is, it's really a, a privilege to be partners with you guys in Germany, in a place that I can't pronounce, obviously. <laughs> but it is, it is such a privilege for River Valley to, be, to do that with you guys and to feel, feel part of it. Yeah. And... Uh, I did a uh, longer conversation with Joe and Allie on our Connect podcast. So if you go to our app, you can uh, listen to that conversation that we had there. Uh, and after the service, you guys will be out by the Global Missions uh, uh, sign out yes. here in the foyer. So if you want to connect with Joe and Allie, you can connect with them there, uh, get more information uh, about them, and, uh, and just encourage them. Yes, thank so, you. So I would love to pray with you uh, now. And... I'm, uh, would you join me in praying for them? And let's, let's pray for what God is about to do, what he's already been doing, and let's thank him for that, okay? Father, we are such, um, we, we, we look at this, God, and we, we say, wow, look at this enormous task uh, that is before Joe and Allie and their team, and yet that's, that was true, that's been true throughout church history, of places that were are and were unreached places where you sent a team, a sent one or two, you sent people in to live missionally, to live out the gospel, what it means to, to believe the gospel through everyday living. So God, I thank you for Joe and Allie. Thank you for their yes. Thank you, God, for the, the team that is surrounding them. Thank you for Jason, who's here and, and what you've done through him and the team there in Germany and planting this, this, these churches in places that desperately need the gospel. So God, I, I pray that you would bless their, their efforts, but God, as they, as they continue to live missionally and planting a church, it's, it's, it's a little unlike what we do here in America. So I, I I pray that as they live missionally, their team lives missionally, God, that you would continue to bring people into their lives 
in grocery stores and parks and, and in places that are unexpected where they will have gospel conversations that they, like Patrick, will come to know who you are and be discipled and follow you. God, I pray for Ahmed now. Together as a church, we pray for Ahmed. God, that the gospel that he has heard, the gospel, Father, that he is, he's, be, he's beheld this, this beautiful gospel and he's been attracted, God. We believe that that's a work of the Spirit in his life. We pray that you would continue to draw him to you and that he would surrender his life to you. God, um, I pray for Joe and Allie and all the, perhaps the, the fears or concerns or the worries, the things, the, the need for partners and financial support and all of these things, God, that, that may be filling their hearts and minds. God, I pray that you would, they would rest in you and that you would bring this work uh, together in a way that would just continue to honor and glorify you that more and more and more people in Germany will come to know you, become part of your global family as you adopt them into your family by your grace. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you thank Joe and Allie for being with us today? Amen. Now would you stand with me? And I would like for us to do a responsive reading. I'll read the first slide. You read the slides that say everyone. The eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Do you not say there are yet four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, that they are white for harvest. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. How then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Brothers and sisters, we together are the preachers. We together are those who proclaim the gospel and live missionally so that more and more people will come to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Let's sing together. You're the God of this city, you're the King of these people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are. You're the light in this darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are. to come and greater things 
so grateful you've come today. I trust that we will pray for Joe and Allie and our partnership in Germany and what God will do there through the planting of this church. And I trust today that we will have take something. If we take something from this service, let's take this, that God has put people around you in your workplace, in your neighborhoods, in your families, and it is intentional that you are where you are that we may be representatives of Jesus Christ to those who have not yet heard or believed. May we find opportunities to live missionally with the gospel at the center of our lives this week. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen and amen. River Valley, you are sent. God bless.